Hello, I'm David Chandler and I'm the New South Wales Building Commissioner and today I'm with Mark Monk, who is a, he's the director and owner of Helm Property Group. Now, Helm are one of the state's quality developers. Mark, why are you here today? I'm here, David, to talk about the Design and Building Practitioners Bill. Um, from, from our perspective and, and where we see the change in the industry and, and what we believe other developers need to be aware of. So Mark, what improvements do you think the Design and Building Practitioners Act is going to make for developers in the state? I really believe that there would be a far greater level of transparency in the industry um, and as a result of that trust will be restored for our industry. Um, we've obviously copped a pounding in the media over the last few years um, and the industry's got some issues. Um, I believe this act will go a long way to resolving those problems. So Mark, you've um, had a pretty hands-on experience as we've been developing the legislation, the regulations and the digital technology that's going to support this. Mm. How have you felt the engagement and, and, and listening to what developers have to say has been included in what we're doing? Uh, without wanting to sound as, as though I belong in your fan club, I think the reality is that the consultation with industry has been exemplary. Um, I've been involved in some other things in regard to government. I've never seen the level of cons consultation and, and I really do believe it's a, a great credit to you and your team in the way in which that um, consultation has taken place and the things you've taken on board. I think the real highlight for me was that uh, in fact we then took the people who were writing the regulations into a real builder's office and showed them what a real process was and it was interesting that there were some good learnings out of that as well wasn't there? Yeah there was and it, and it was a good experience from our perspective too because we got to be able to engage firsthand and, and actually relate um, our concerns and experiences and, and, and we know that that was taken on board so it's, it's been a, a great process from our perspective. Mark tell me how you're upskilling your organisation in preparation for what lies ahead. Uh, look, we have um, we're making it compulsory for everyone in our team to actually view a Construct New South Wales video, um, which is on the Have this, Your Say web page. Um, it gives a really good overview of the Act. Um, the key people in our, our organisation is reading the regulations, the Act um, and the regulatory impact statement and understanding what it means or what the Act means and what, they, what we need to do in terms of changing our systems and procedures to comply with the Act. We're starting to, to change the way in which our consultants work, just simple things, title blocks, um, those types of things are starting to be amended. We're working through the documentation with our consultants and to ensure that what they are producing can be uploaded to the system and can be read um, by the system. So of course the new world is a digital world as well. So your consultants are going to have to come to terms with the fact that everything they do in the future will have a digital twin and it'll follow them forever. So when we say do it right or there'll be consequences, it's not just consequences on the job site, it's a consequence with their own personal brands. Yeah, it is. And, and I think that's probably the most powerful tool that you have in the Act. Um, it's, it's people's credibility. And at the end of the day, you, you know, from our perspective, it is Im imperative that we restore trust. The industry needs to be trusted, people need to be able to purchase an apartment and know that it's a trustworthy building, it's a trustworthy apartment. Um, so I think the fact that that's tied back to people's reputations is a great thing. I think one of the great things is that builders and developers that have created for con detailed for construction documentation will be far less impacted by these regulations than builders that have produced, or builders and developers that have produced minimal documentation. Um, designing on the run should never have been a thing and it has been in our industry and it needs to be eradicated and it will be under these controls. The fact that designs have to be declared, detailed designs have to be produced before construction can commence will stop that type of, um, that type of building in our industry. And uh, design, there will be implications, you know, people need to start to think about those things now scheduling, budgeting, um, there will be implications that come out of this for people who have not produced a quality set of documents in the first instance. So you've heard that uh, we've started the OC audit process and of course that's where we're going to be testing whether proper designs and proper buildings are being made in the future. 
Do you think at least the industry is now understanding that that sort of review of their work is in play and there's consequences? Absolutely, yeah. It, it's got out there. You know, the fact that I think uh, the last time we spoke, you were at a, over a thousand bathrooms being ripped out of projects that are, that are near completed um, should be making everyone in our industry sit up and, and really pay attention to the fact that had those bathrooms in the first instance been detailed properly, been membraned properly, then all of that work of taking all of the things that have already gone into that, you know, tiles, shower screens, vanities, all those things, being taken out, taken back down, thrown away, and then bringing everything back up. I mean, $500 for each bathroom, let's say, to do it properly, as opposed to $20,000 to rip everything out and put it back in, is just, uh, it's a great message for people that are doing the wrong thing. And it makes it um, pretty clear that, in fact, uh, arguing over the fact that the cost of Australian standards might be two or $3,000 for a set that might guide you to avoiding that sort of problem. Uh, the last time I did a calculation based on the project that we both know about, I estimated that, in fact, the cost of doing that remediation was 2,000 times the cost of the standard. Makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? It does. It so, really does, yeah. Mark, thank you for coming in and talking to us. And, and what I hope that we're doing is we're conveying to the industry, first of all, from a developer's perspective, that in fact, there are better processes and more transparency and more accountability coming into play. And you've been really helpful in helping us shape that, as have another half a dozen or so developers who've committed a huge amount of time. So we're really appreciative of that. But I hope the other side of the message is that consumers can now start to hear evidence from the players who are making buildings that things are going to be different in New South Wales and that they can become more confident to invest in new off-the-plan apartments in this state.